right, students, I hope you're doing well. This is Mr. Morris, who finally has internet back, and so I think I can do this now. So I wanna really, you know, it's hard enough with the tornadoes and the COVID-19 social distancing, and I, I, you know, the best I've been able to do for a few days is find a YouTube video and then give an assignment. But I wanna walk you through a cool little uh, program that you can use as long as you have internet access or cell phone, you know, data access to help you interpret some of these uh, real world quadratic problems. So let's look at one together and hopefully this will clarify some of y'all's, um, I don't know, misconceptions or frustrations you've been having. I've had a few calls with people who are like, Mr. Morris, I don't get it. So um, this is today's lesson as well and I want you guys to all try this, all right? So um, I'm gonna put a link to this um, worksheet on the Facebook page and let's look at this first one together. It'll be a little heads up. It says, Jason jumped off a cliff into the ocean in Acap Acapulco. I think I said that right, I don't know. This is an English class. While vacationing with some friends. <laughs> His height as a function of time could be modeled by the function h of t equals, and I don't know if you can see that, let me unhighlight it, excuse me, negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 480, where t is the time in seconds and h is the height in feet. So a lot of these real world problems with quadratics are something called projectile motion problems. And it's a way to calculate, you know, if you were to throw something over, you know, from a height up into the air, how long will it take to reach the ground or when will it reach its maximum height? And you can answer all kinds of questions that way using a quadratic model. So <clears throat> I wanna show you guys how you can use your graphing calculator, or if you don't have access to a graphing calculator because of the internet these days, you can actually go to a website. I posted this in our, uh, last week's video, but I'm gonna show you guys real quick. If you go to desmos.com slash calculator, can you see that address right there? I'll try to put it in the uh, comments later. desmos.com slash calculator. It actually has a graphing calculator that you can use um, to help answer some of these questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you really quickly this function, negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 480. Now, you don't have to use t, right? Variables, it just you pick a letter, it doesn't matter. They chose t because they're talking about time, so they like to match up the, what you're talking about with the letter. But if you wanna use x, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So I would go to desmos.com backslash calculator and if you click over there, I've already put it in. You just type that in just as is. I chose to use X because I'm used to doing X and you guys are used to that too, but you could have said negative 16 T squared, okay? You just type it right in here. It's really easy. You click on there, boom, boom, type it in. And it should graph it for you, but it might be hard to see until you adjust the scale. So I wanna show you guys this on the video because I want you to interpret these um, your information with this graph. So what I want you to do, if you take a look here, go to the website, you can do it along with this video. But if you go over here to the right side, you'll see a little toolbar function, you click on that. And what you have to do is really get the scale right. This might be new for you guys, so a little bit of a technology lesson here. See how it says 480? That's your height, that's how tall this guy is. If you go back to the word problem, it says he jumped off of a cliff, okay? Cliffs are very high. So in this case, that last number, the y-intercept, always represents the initial height that a person's either jumping from or a ball's being thrown from. So 480 represents how high up this guy was before he jumped off a cliff. Don't recommend doing this at home in case you guys have any ideas that need to get squashed, but this is what the guy's doing in this scenario. So 480 is gonna be how high he is when he jumps woo, off the cliff and then finally hits the ocean. Not a good idea in my opinion, but hey, do you, I guess. Okay, so we have to get the scale to match and fit. In other words, get the graph to fit in the window and you have to change that going over to tool. So just as a reminder, it look like this. I click on the tool icon, right? And then I can adjust the scale. So there's an X axis and a Y axis. Well, the Y axis lets me know how high something is. So I first want to adjust my Y axis and notice I went ahead and changed this, and I'll, I'll make it look like y'all's in a second. You know, we can, if there's any information there, it'll probably be a bunch of decimals. Okay, you can fill out whatever you want here. So you want it to be as high as at least 480. I like to go a little bit above whatever the y-intercept is. So if it says 480, I know for my graph to show right. See, look what it looks like when I have zeros in there. You know, you can't really see the graph. So I want you guys to go over here. 
I do a little bit above 480. So in this case, I did 500. So that tells me that it'll show me as high as 500 feet up on the y-axis, okay? Then um, as low as I need it to go, I really don't need it to go any lower than about zero, right? So, you know, I put zero in, and then no notice how all of a sudden your graph, you can see it go as high as 500, right? And then over here in the x-axis, you know, you don't need a whole lot of information. I just chose something that was enough to show some real-world information. I just kind of played with it. So I chose 50, and you could do negative 10, and that'll show you the whole parabola. But if you just want to see that first quadrant, you don't even have to do negative 10. You can just plug in zero, and then look, it shows you the starting point on the cliff, him jumping off. If you want to show a little bit more of that parabola, go into the negatives a little bit. So I'll, I'll go back to negative 10, because that way I can kind of see the whole quadratic model, okay? So now that we've adjusted our scale, something realistic, like, okay, let's go about 50. There's these options here that say step, all right? If you're going all the way up to 500 feet, I do not suggest, check out what happens. I do not suggest you count by ones, all right? That's how many, when you count by ones, I mean, ugh, it's hard to read all that. You gotta, you know, I wanna count by probably, what did I do earlier? Probably by 50, because 50, 20, you know, 50, 100, 150, that's the easier way to get and show the information. So it adjusts my scale, you know, counting by 50 now. This is 250, up 50 is 300, 350. It's just an easier way to fit all the information in. Now, when it comes to my x-axis, I didn't have to go very far. I'm just going up to 50. So I decided to count by 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And, and that's how this information is interpreted. Now, if we want to show a little bit, I could change that to, excuse me, I can change that to negative 10. And that way, it just gives you a little bit of the bottom part, you know, however low you go. If you go to, let's say we went to negative, I don't know, 40, for example. Notice how it shows you a little bit more down here below. So you can kind of see all, the whole, the whole idea is I adjust the scale so I can see the entire parabola. If I have a large number like this, I gotta make sure I adjust it way higher so I can kind of see the whole thing. Does that make sense? So that is very helpful. You can kind of play around with it until you see um, your entire parabola. All right, watch this video several times if you need to. So you guys can kind of figure out where we're headed here. So we want to, the whole point is I want to be able to interpret this quadratic model from a graph and be able to answer several pieces of information about it. So I'm gonna go back over to my word problem here. It says Jason jumped off a cliff and we know that cliff, because of the y-intercept, was 480 feet tall, okay? Probably a bad idea, but that's what he decided to do. All right, the question is, you know, T's time, but it's, it really wants to know, part A, how long did it take Jason to reach his maximum height? Okay, pay attention to the words. How long did it take him to reach his maximum height? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my graph, and you'll notice the maximum height didn't take very long. I mean, a human being can't jump super high, relatively speaking. So he's starting from 480 feet. He jumps. Ugh. I mean, what a vertical this guy has. I mean, look, he made it like a half a foot. <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm joking. No, 0.5 actually means how much time has gone by. So half a second goes by and he jumps. He actually has a pretty good vertical. This is true. He goes 480 feet to 484 feet. Uh, I don't really know that that guy, I mean, that would have to be Michael Jordan to jump four feet, but whatever. Anyway, he jumps up and he's at about half second. Looks like he made it to, let me click on it, 484 feet. So it only took him, listen, the x-intercept, how left or right, that, that's time. This y represents height. So he made it 484 feet, that's his maximum height, in about a half a second. You see that? And I got that information simply by clicking on the top of this parabola, all right? Four feet, I mean, goodness, that's four, That's 48 inches. I think Michael Jordan maybe one time had a 48 inch vertical and that's even suspect. So unless this guy, um, I don't know, was like an NBA superstar, this is not that realistic, but that's what the word problem says, <laughs> okay? So I'm answering this first question, how long did it take? Long means time to reach his maximum height, it only took him a half a second. Jump, think about it, when you're in the air, you jump, you're not in the air very long. So a half second, he jumped four feet. Man, that guy has good, 
good legs. <laughs> all right, so that first answer, 0. 0.5, there's a gimme for you, all right? Then I just read each question as is. What was the highest point that Jason reached? So similar information, but different question. So the first one says, how long till he reaches it? Well, I'm not saying 484, uh-uh. It was only a half a second, 0. 0.5 seconds. But what was his maximum height? When I click on that, you can clearly see this is the Y, it talks about height. So he reached a maximum height of 484 feet. What was the highest point that Jason reached? Go back to the calculator, 484 feet. You understand? So this website is very critical or having a graphing calculator so that you can generate a graph and be able to visually, for y'all visual folks, be able to answer these questions, okay? So <clears throat> you can answer several questions like this. It says, Jason hit the water after how many seconds? Now let's just look at this visually for a second. Imagine this isn't a coordinate plane. Imagine this big long y intercept, or excuse me, this y axis is a cliff. He jumped off said cliff. Half a second, he went four feet high. It's a pretty good jump. And then he, I mean, he is falling fast. I hope he's practiced his diving or else he's gonna die. <laughs> he belly flops, he's dead. But anyway, you get here and I click right on there. This x-axis, in this case, think about it visually, that would represent the water. Hopefully he's not dumb enough to jump off a cliff onto the cement ground, okay? Then he's going, we're going to his funeral real fast. He's jumping off into the ocean, into the water. So this x-axis, in this case, would represent the water. And it looks like he hits a height of zero. See where it says six comma zero? Zero feet means you aren't up in the air anymore. You are on ground or in the water. That's where you hit the surface of the water. So at zero feet, that means he went to the water, right? It took him six seconds to finally get there. That's kind of a long fall. I mean, if you think about it in terms of, you know, if you're afraid of heights, I mean, I don't want to fall for six seconds. That seems long. All right, so six seconds, he finally hits a height of zero. So I know it took him six seconds. Wasn't that the question? Jason hit the water after how many seconds? You see how I'm interpreting this stuff? Okay, so each time you get a new question, you go back, you look at the new function they give you, and you type that in. So see how this one says negative 16t squared plus 28t? Uh, I go to Desmos, I get rid of this and type that new one in here, and I adjust the scale as needed with this function. Okay, so I want y'all to try this. I think this is maybe the easiest way to do it since we're not physically together. And please ask me questions if you need to, okay? All right, this is all I got for today. I will be posting the uh, assignment just like this. You'll go through this first question, which if you watch the video, you pretty much got that done for you. Then this one, you'll try again, read the questions. I cannot emphasize that enough. And there are a couple pages I'll be specific in the description. All right. God bless you. Hallelujah. I got internet back. Hopefully you all do too.